here is where our paths diverge from the people who really saw in this event. Because now, we first make, look, there's, certain, there's certain things that have to be true for us to do this. This is the kind of question I can ask in text questions. Is, um, you know, what, when does it make sense to do small approximations? Uh, to do these uh, small oscillation approximations? And, and you were saying, we must be near a minimum in, in the potential. We must be very slow. We must be near zero as well. The tail expansion of the potential energy must contain a second derivative term that is non zero. And indeed, it, it must be uh, a Hessian matrix, there must be positive energy. And this must also be true of the kinetic energy in the Hessian matrix, which is this. So we now find those Hessian matrices. That's the next step. And once we found them, we solve. U tilde minus lambda T tilde. Uh, well, what I put in squiggle? I believe that was put in squiggle. U squiggle minus lambda T squiggle. And we <coughs> solve this matrix for zero determinant in order to solve for lambda. <coughs> And then we can also solve obviously for eigenvectors, and that gives us a matrix. Okay. And once we've solved all that stuff, we simply write out the solutions. And those solutions look like um, your equilibrium <coughs> coordinates, whatever they were. things 
first. Remember that each yard has a length 2L. That means that the length down here is L. And this point here is going to be a distance 2L, but the length over here is L. Oh, okay. Right. So let's put in an X and a Y axis. And I'm going to put them in, in whichever fashion I, uh, I choose, right here. Doesn't matter where I choose them to point. Whatever you feel comfortable with. You'll get the same answer for the velocity. What should I make them? Should I make the y go up and the x go across? Or what do you guys prefer? X down. Okay, let's put it to vote. Y going up and x going across. X going down and y going across. Okay, so the y going up is getting winning. So we're going to put y up and x across in the standard fashion. In which case, what are the coordinates of the first center of mass? Remember, 
if and only if I do things around the center of mass. If and only if I do things around the center of mass, then the kinetic energy expression decouples nicely. And it just looks like a uh half -huh, mass 1 times the velocity at the center of mass squared plus a uh half -huh, times the inertia of that rod times by its angular velocity squared. This is just theta dot squared. I mean, theta, theta is the angle of the rod, so theta dot is the <coughs> angular velocity at which the rod is rotating. So this expression I can write down for the first kinetic energy. And the second kinetic energy will be a similar expression. The kinetic energy of the second rod is going to look like T2 is a half M2 this U. Minus is going to cancel with the minus from differentiation. 
and we're going to get two L feet to dot. This one should be five dots. That one should be great. Uh, one point to me. <laughs> um, two L feet to dot. Fine, Peter. Minus for cancelling out. And again, minus we're going to cancel out. Plus L five dot. Now we can take out some terms. Certainly there's going to be an L squared in common everywhere. Um, and then we can square the first term first, second term second, and have a look at what happens with the cross terms. So the first term first looks like, well let's take L squared out. It's going to look like 4 theta dot squared plus squared theta. Plus five dot squared cos squared phi. I'm gonna leave the cross term until a minute. I'm gonna put the cross terms together. Let's do the first term squared here. So we're going to have plus four theta dot squared sine squared theta plus five dot squared sine squared phi, or morning balls should be reading about all these cos squared and sine squared hanging around in close vicinity to each other. Um, and now let's, let's put in the cos terms. It's going to look like, remember it's 2 times this one times this one. Right? So it's going to look like 4 all squares to outside, theta dot phi dot cos theta cos phi, 4 theta dot Phi dot cos theta cos phi, and this one plus 4 again, theta dot phi dot sine theta sine phi. And again, your compound angle bowl should be more uh, ring sine theta sine phi. Right. So we can do quite a lot of little simplifications here. The first one is 4 theta dot squared times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Well, that's just 4 theta dot squared. The second one is 5 dot squared times cos squared phi plus sine squared phi. Well, that's just 5 dot squared. The next one is 4 theta dot phi dot times cos theta cos phi plus sine theta sine phi. Well, that's just 4 theta dot phi dot times cos of theta minus phi. Right, did I get all that right? Quickly compute it. 
or you can just remember the answer. In this case, let's see, you've got a point at the center. The perpendicular distance is always just r from here to here. So we're going to integrate from minus l in this case to l. Right, so it's length to l. We're going to integrate um, r third squared dm, which just becomes r squared times the density rho, which in this case is the mass over the length. R. So we just get m over 2l times by r cubed over 3, evaluated between minus l and l, so it becomes 2r cubed over 3. And we get an answer of uh, 2 L cubed over 3 divided by L, 2 is cancelled, 1 over 3 M L Right, so another way you could have done this, if you don't like integrals and they uh, give you nightmares at that night, <laughs> you could instead have just remembered the results for a rod of length L rotated around the center. Now that is, of course, 1 over 12 <laughs> ml squared. But in this case, L is equal to 2L. The length of the rod is 2L. That's what we're given. So we plug it in, and we get um, 1 over 12 m 2L, 2L squared, which is 4 over 12 or 1 over 3 ml squared. So either way, we get the same answer for whichever method we use for um, the invention. Right, so we now have all we need to plug back in and get our kinetic energies. Um, so let's do it. Plus 4 
theta dot phi dot cos theta by phi. And that's just the first piece plus a half i2 phi dot squared, which we already know to look like this. 1 over 6.